I just got word that this really, really amazing person died. Uh, I don't know when today or maybe in the last few days, but uh, um, the rumor mill is spreading this story to me. When I first uh, um, sort of realized how screwed up the world was, and I moved to Isois, BC, there was this native guy, homeless guy, named Ben. And this guy was truly, truly one of the most amazing people I've ever seen. He was an alcoholic, lived on the streets, was homeless, but he had a lot of respect from everybody in the town. He would clean up bottles. You know, that's how he got his money to drink all the time. But he also, when he was cleaning up, you know, picking up his bottles all over town, he would also clean up the parks and, uh, you know, make sure that uh, all the garbage was picked up all the time. Um, a lot of people didn't know the pain this guy was in, that he was tortured most of his, his life when he was a kid in the Indian band, or what white people did to him still in this day and age. And I'm pretty sure this guy was a little younger than me, and yet in his childhood, government systems tortured him and beat him. And from what I heard, um, they had these schools for, for native people. They, they kept them separate from their families. And uh, I, I believe they just shut some of these, the last of these schools down just recently. There's a lot of shit on our planet that we don't even know is going on. And, uh, I don't know, I've reached out to this guy quite a few times. Um, he really, really had a loving heart. A massive, massive, loving, loving heart. And the world just, he's seen the worst of the worst. And that's why he was home. Because the level of pain society put him in. How do you how do you take that much pain away from a human being? You beat them silly their entire life. How do you take away that pain when you torture somebody? You know, there's just no counseling. There's no way that you can make somebody get rid of that pain and still allow that system to continue, to still allow that kind of behavior to continue. The, the mind goes mad. And that's why he drank, because of the pain. So then, you can see people just judge him because he's a homeless native guy, alcoholic native guy. And it could be so freaking cruel if you didn't know him, if, the, if you weren't from the town and you didn't know who this guy was. And you didn't know his story. You would just throw names at a homeless guy. I'd rather have his heart than the heart of somebody that's driving their Mercedes, that's looking down at a homeless person. Because this guy could still love people, even though he's seen what people do to him. And, and he sees what people did to other people. I've seen police in the stories not give a shit about this guy. And yet the police would not do anything to stop the criminals who, who committed crimes 
against him. I, I would trust this guy more than I would trust the police. Today is a very, very sad day to know that he's died. His pain is over. The world is has lost a magnificent soul. The sense of pain is now over. And at the same time, a good friend of mine, Dave, who has told me so much severe abuse he's gone to, to hear what, what him and his brothers went through and the amount of abuse that they had to live through. From what I hear, his brothers are, are mostly all uh, drug addicts too, homeless and, and drug addicts. Dave is doing well, has, has a family. Definitely had the same amount of pain as what his brothers have, but his brothers, one of his brothers just died recently too. Sounds like a drug overdose. When you look at people that are homeless or they're on drugs, they're dealing with a severe amount of pain because of crimes that we chose to ignore. We don't like to enforce crime. We don't like to bring criminals to justice. The criminals are running the world right now. Dave has a very, very powerful message. Dave has, has been through hell and uh, fought that addiction and knows that there's something that we're supposed to be doing. Only when you have that level of love and that level of strength to not go into the addictions can you learn some of the your best messages from. Uh, trust me, I'll be fighting addiction myself. Um, I understand um, alcohol, al alcoholism and uh, drug addiction. Um, I know that it's nothing more than a pain killer. And some are in so much pain because of such extreme boredom. Because we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. So this is uh, more of a, a video in memory of Vince. It was an honor knowing you, Vince. You were one of the most impressive people I've ever met on this planet. He had huge love. I remember him in a the gro grocery store parking lot. I was trying to help him out. And he had a Coleman stove that didn't have uh, any anything to make it work. He just got some sticks and some paper and started making this little fire out of this in this Coleman stove right in the grocery store parking lot. As he had a pot and he's trying to heat up some potatoes and some vegetables because that was going to be his meal for the day. And right beside that was the, elk, uh, the, the, the uh, liquor store. And it was getting cold and trying to figure out where we could get this guy to live instead of being on the streets. And then a cop wanted to come and pick him up. <laughs> Cops just have no no comprehension. 
they could not relate to what the hell was going on with this guy at all. They just think, oh, you just want to be homeless. Oh, you just want to be an alcoholic. And not really know what the causes are. Because does this cop ever stop to think that maybe he's the victim of a crime? And do you, you know, maybe ask Vince, can I take down your information? Put some people in jail that did this to you? They don't even recognize that. They don't recognize it at all. They work for the criminals. They're sort of trained to do so. So, um, in memory to Vince, it was an honor knowing you. And Dave, um, my heart goes out to you. Um, losing your brother and probably getting flashes of memories that you had to deal with that let's stay on course and make a difference all of this has happened all of the bad hell is to show us what's wrong and we just have to start doing what's right because it's going to get worse I'm seeing a few people lose their minds a little bit um, few people have asked me how he's doing. I, I personally am doing good other than these bad news and my heart breaking because of these losses. Um, my heart's always going to be in a lot of pain watching that we have to see all of this destruction go on. I really wish everybody kind of wake up to some things are a little wrong and maybe this is a little bit of an answer but uh, we got to learn uh, through our mistakes. Everything I learned was through every one of my mistakes. And so if that's the way everybody wants to learn is through their mistakes, kind of at one with that. Um, I'm not going to push my will on anybody else. I happen to think that that's wrong. I'm not uh, kind of against leaders. Don't want to be a leader. Just want to be a friend. Anybody needs any of my help in what I can help in. Um, here I am. Um, don't believe in aliens. Don't believe God's going to come and save you. N you know, like, where are the aliens? Like, no, they've never come and saved anybody. They're supposed to be there. They all got enemies out in outer space that they can't seem to solve their problems, but yet they think that they can come and solve our problems. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, they can shoot down bombs. Why aren't they shooting down these uh, harp and um, they're just not out there. Um, I do 100% believe in God, but God ain't coming to save you either. You know, you have an aspect of God inside you, and uh, we all do. We also have an aspect of evil inside of us too, and we got to know the difference. we got to know what's right and wrong and start choosing to do the right thing and start getting in alignment with each other and do the right thing. You know, we got to save ourselves. <laughs> what does save yourself look like? Um, somebody passed me a video on this Soul Play Orb guy. There's one good example. You know, this guy is pushing out a whole pile of videos saying he's trying to help everybody, but look at him. He's very, very angry. And uh, what kind of advice is he giving? I don't want to follow somebody that's that angry and believing in somebody's going to save you and the world's all going to end. And I'm trying to save you before the world ends. It's like, you know what? We are the ones destroying the planet. <laughs> you know, I don't see him saying, we need to smarten up. <laughs> you know, it's more or less, let's do everything that's wrong give me the money from you all doing what's wrong and somehow the planet will, you know, like well the planet's going to be destroyed according to him and uh, you, but you will evolve through every doing everything that's wrong it just doesn't make any sense to me I am doing well, haven't had a cigarette, don't even have an urge for a cigarette the purging of this, uh, this book that me and Dave are working on is like feeling 
so amazing and getting into the yoga and uh, going for some nice walks and I am doing fine other than some of this bad news that breaks my heart I am doing really good give those bottled water a try works for me peace out <laughs>